Part of what makes games compelling is that they offer new social possibilities. They allow us to be new kinds of people within groups as we relate to our families, the clans, or groups that we, we game with, and then ultimately be new kinds of people in the world. And although that can happen alone with a console, most often it happens when you're playing as a part of some sort of affinity space or, or a game community. And for me, I oftentimes think back to this image as, as what got me to really grok this idea. So this is a druid character. Many of you will recognize this. This is a druid from World of Warcraft. I think Circa, the original kind of vanilla version. And I remember very vividly bumping into a character walking around in Azeroth who looked like this. And I thought, oh my gosh, what is that thing? Like, what are those branches? It's got some sort of crazy tree coming out of it. I want to be one of those kinds of people, cow things. And so immediately that got me interested in who is that person? How did they get there? Um, how can I become that kind of, and then, kind of character? And then what's my job going to be in this world if that is me? So um, am I a healer? Am I someone who is um, doing a lot of damage? You know, wh what does it mean to be that kind of a character? Games like these, um, which many of you already know, and if not, you'll be learning about more in this course, are games where you log into a world, say, with um, thousands or millions of people, and you explore being new kinds of people in new kinds of groups. And a lot of the learning that happens um, through any kind of a game is through this sort of social participation. As you make new um, inferences about the game experience and you test out your interpretations against other people, as you play in groups and understand what you can do as your character or with your own skill sets versus other people. And this is really a large part of how learning happens within games. So in terms of designed experience, we can think of one, the game as a system that you're interacting with, but then two, this encompassing social sphere. And the game as a designed object it can also foster certain kinds of social experiences. And this is something that games do really well, that educators, we're really fascinated by. So how is it that certain game features, like um, forcing you to group or encouraging you to group at certain points of the experience, get you to start socializing and meeting new kinds of people? Or how games encourage you to, f to become part of a larger organization, like a, a guild? Um, and games do this uh, in very clever ways. And that's the kind of thing as educators that we really are interested in trying to leverage. Now there's one final component that is really critical to this in, in terms of a theory of learning for games, and that's this last thing about how do games get you to start producing information, producing knowledge, and becoming an active, productive member of a group uh, or a society or a game. Um, and what we want to think about is how games offer new productive possibilities as well as consumptive abilities. And for me, my experiences on this go back again to mudding. Um, to a, a social game that I played about 20 years ago with some elementary school kids. And um, the screen looks kind of primitive, but something that was really cool about these kind of games is that you could um, become producers very easily. So you didn't need to have, say, a, a, an elaborate set of gra uh, graphic skills or a knowledge of graphical tools to really think about contributing. So this is a mug called Avatar. Um, this was a game that I played, and I learned about it actually while I was a teacher at school. I was teaching with Janet Kretschmer here, and she confiscated a note from a kid in class that said something like this, 4 E. Uh, five South and Six West. And if you, if you played a game like this, you know what this means. We didn't at the time. Like, what, what in the world are these things? And I had played some games similar to this, and I looked at it and said, I think these are directions, maybe? These look like coordinates. And so we grabbed the note from the kid who actually promptly tried to take it and put it in his mouth and swallow it. Like, don't, you can't find out what we're doing. And it turns out what they were doing was going home every day after school, logging on to an online world, and, and playing with thousands of people from around the world. And Janet's first reaction was, oh my gosh, you mean you're going home and logging online with strangers from Europe and God knows where playing? And, and your so her second thought was, uh, do your parents know that, about this? And then next was, Kurt, you've got to see this. This thing is amazing. Um, think of the kinds of things we can do. I mean, our kids now in class, all new people from different countries. They had a, a broad range of experiences and people they got to meet that they never would know in this small town in Ohio. And the big thing that she did is she let them integrate it into their schoolwork. So as these kids were playing, she was started thinking, well, wouldn't it be neat if you learned to write an area like this or program an area like this? So a couple of the kids went home, um, started taking some pens and paper and drawing up some plans, and eventually they even wrote their own area. Now, this area was really quite sophisticated. This is a map of it. Um, it was played by thousands of people for years and years and years. The kids were in fourth and fifth grade. 
Um, and you look and see, this was actually an area based on Winnie the Pooh. So they modeled the entire Winnie the Pooh universe um, inside of a game in kind of environment. So it's called the 100 Acres Wood. It had about 50 pages of text. There were maps. There were room and area descriptions. This was really elaborate stuff for an elementary school kid to be doing. And um, it was really, this is to me what we really want to see happening through games, right? So you want kids to be playing games where they can develop a deep system level understanding. Next, starting to participate in social groups and guilds where they start to become tutored and mentored into new ways of being. But then next, taking on the role of designer and starting to design the rules of those worlds and starting to develop their own depictions and their own creative vision for how the world can be. And this to me is kind of the, the um, model and the inspiration for what games could possibly be doing for our le learning environments.